Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live 10 at 10. Even though people are dying, um, you know, be, coming from that world, I remember people would overdose on heroin and, and you'd want that stuff because you wouldn't think it would happen to you. If you haven't been impacted in some way by the area's ongoing drug problems, wait a short while. Chances are you will. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Police departments are keeping tabs on the number of drug-related deaths, but those in the know say far more go unreported. There are other unsettling numbers that have come to our attention. They relate to the shrinking group of licensed addiction counselors in North Dakota. These are people who play a big role in helping you or a loved one stop using. The pouring of colored sand is a tradition for some folks seeking sobriety. It's done in a group setting at Prairie St. John's in Fargo. The layers symbolize individuals who are sharing a struggle with drugs and alcohol. Sadly, a growing number of those colors have come to represent people who have lost their lives to addiction. Rarely do you see in an obituary that somebody died from addiction. Um, we look in the papers and we see our patients in there and we can gather that, you know, unfortunately addiction probably took this person because we've known the struggles. The opiate epidemic is being felt all across the state. I, it's, it's out of hand. Tyler Auk has been sober for five plus years after struggling for 22. He's currently interning at Heartview to become a licensed addiction counselor. All I can do is, is um, show them some hope and hope that they take a little bit of that and, and find recovery themselves. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Tom Reagan got his license later in life after sensing a need to help youth who were abusing drugs and wrestling with suicide. He's been a counselor for three years. And, and I decided to uh, become a part of the solution. But then I also went back to school and, and got a degree uh, in addiction counseling. There are currently roughly 370 licensed addiction counselors working in North Dakota. Five years ago, of that total, half were 50 years of age or older. So when you go to our conferences and walk around, it's gray hair everywhere. It really is. Kurt Snyder heads up Heartview, which has treatment facilities in Bismarck and Kandu. Snyder says last year, 31 people didn't renew their licenses in North Dakota, but they were able to license 29. The state is keeping up for now, but he says it doesn't account for continued growth or the large numbers expected to retire soon. But it's a crisis. It's, it's... It's an epidemic and we have so many people that are in trouble and we need quality people that are well prepared um, to serve those folks. Those who do the hiring tell me that treatment facilities in larger cities in Fargo and Bismarck have an adequate number of applicants. It's the rest of the state, especially western North Dakota and rural areas that are struggling. There are those who think the licensure requirements in North Dakota need some adjusting. One of those requirements calls for 1,400 hours of being an intern before you can get your license. Usually that's after schooling and is unpaid. But the answer always seems to be lower the standards. And it's a complicated illness and we need well-prepared people. The Addiction Board is very aware of the 1400 hour requirement and is working diligently to address that and to be a little bit more flexible in terms of allowing people to become licensed quicker. Uliana Nevland is a professor at the University of Mary. Mary offers a 20 month master's degree in addiction counseling. The demand is definitely there. Most of our graduates, if not all of them, already have jobs lined up before they even graduate with their master's degrees. Besides their regular jobs, Nevland, Snyder and Sorensen are three of seven voting members on the North Dakota Board of Addiction Counseling Examiners, a volunteer board that plays a key role in shaping requirements to be licensed in the state. All three said the board is actively working to provide greater flexibility for both in-state and out-of-state applicants. But all three were hesitant to say any more, referring me to chairman of the board, Deb Davis. To Sue Olson at home whose son or daughter or husband or whatever is struggling with addiction and, and especially in the rural areas, right. all they're concerned about is making sure that there's someone out there to help their loved ones. How does the board take on that responsibility? 
Well, that isn't the board's responsibility. You know, if you look at the mission of the board, we're a regulatory board. That would be who is hiring, right? Or if people want to live there. The requirements, although very important, are only one piece of the puzzle. There are some who support the idea of the North Dakota legislature approving tuition-free education for those wanting to become licensed addiction counselors. For Tom Reagan, he says such a move would attract young people into counseling. Uh, however, uh, after that, after your license, then you must stay in the state of North Dakota and practice your profession for one, two, or three years uh, in a payoff program. Getting the state of North Dakota to agree won't be easy. Budgets are tight. The last time the legislature was approached, it agreed to offer a loan at 6% for those needing money during the 1,400 hours of interning. Now that's a debt that would be in addition to thousands of dollars already borrowed to get their masters. So as a state, we're, we're, we have, uh, we're underfunded for addiction services. We're understaffed. We don't have the workforce, and we're, we're not integrated with health care. How did we get to this point? Well, some blame a good old boy's mentality years ago, saying that the stiffer board requirements protected jobs. Many of the established counselors were grandfathered in and didn't have to meet the stepped-up requirements. Current chairman Deb Davis denies that, adding that North Dakota is in the middle when compared to other states. As far as the legislature, a state senator from this area indicated to me that there's more financial assistance already in place and that this upcoming session, they'll look at providing additional help. All right, thanks for that report, Mike. What appears to be a nationwide robocall threatens schools in our region today. Jeannie Middle School in West Fargo and Century Elementary School in Grand Forks both received a bomb threat today. Students at both schools were evacuated as police conducted searches, and both schools received the all clear. We're also learning that the calls extend across the country. To name a few, bomb threats were also reported in Rochester, Minnesota, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Madison, Wisconsin, and Cheyenne, Wyoming. All of the telephone threats locally and across the country were automated. The West Fargo police chief says they're likely related and believes there's no credible threat. A large explosion at the Senex in Detroit Lake shut down part of Highway 34 for almost an hour today. The call came in just before 5. When officials arrived, a car was engulfed in flames. Police tell us, according to the driver, her car was turned off. And based on surveillance video, she wasn't smoking or on her phone. It was very scary. I've been in retail for about 35 years and I've never seen anything as scary as that. No one was injured. Senex shut off its gas valves as soon as the fire was seen. Gas station attendants recommend to always be aware of your surroundings and follow proper safety precautions. When people are filling up gas, uh, always remember to turn your car off. If you're filling up a, like a little red gallon, always make sure to put it on the ground when you start filling it up. Uh, no cell phones, never smoke. Just always protect yourself. Police tell us the cause of that fire is still under investigation. The Minnesota legislative session ended this weekend, but there was work left undone, affecting nearly every corner of the state. Minnesota DFL Deputy Minority Leader Paul Marquardt categorized this session as the good, the bad, and the ugly. Marquardt says lawmakers couldn't agree on a bonding bill, and there was little work done on making Minnesota compliant with the federal Real ID Act. And that means the tens of millions of dollars meant for the Moorhead grade separation project won't happen. It was disappointing that we did not get a bonding bill done. And the other major disappointment was we did not get a long-term funding solution for transportation. The good news? $800 million in tax cuts. And for people living in a rural Minnesota school district, the state will pay you, will pay you 40 percent of your property tax increase that's due to a school bond referendum. Fargo could be switching the way you recycle by next year. The city approving a contract with Minn Kota Recycling and is looking into a single sort system with the company. A study is underway and that will show estimated cost and interest before a decision is made. West Fargo is one city that already uses single sort recycling at a cost of about $4 a month. Right now, Fargo uses free curbside recycling and 27 drop-off locations. If decided, the change would come in 2017. 
Just one month into the construction project on 13th Avenue South in Fargo, police have already issued more than 40 tickets within the work zone, speeding or cutting through business parking lots. That's going to cost you a fine of $80 or more. Now keep this in mind because starting tomorrow, an intersection in the 13th Avenue construction zone will be temporarily closed. The north side intersection at 13th Avenue and 43rd Street will be closed while contractors work to complete underground utility work. They're going to be replacing the old storm sewer and water main across the roadway. The intersection closure is expected to last until the end of the week. Drivers will still be able to access all businesses on the north side of 43rd Street, but direct access from 13th Avenue at the intersection will change during the temporary closure. For more information on this project, head to our website at valleynewslive.com and click on this story. An additional emergency siren is planned on NDSU property in Fargo. The city approached the university about adding one at 15th Avenue North and 18th Street. The spot is more central to where one already sits at 12th and 10th Street. The city says it plans to add another one eventually on Park Board property. Valley News Live, 10 at 10.